what am I doing with my life? <laughs> this is an existential crisis level kind of question that I think we've all asked ourselves at one point or another. And this is a valid, vital question, right? What, how do I have a good life? What does it mean to me? And if we don't have a good answer to that question, or if we worry that the answer to that question is actually something very different than what we're doing right now, you know, that is the kind of thing that will keep us up all night. What am I doing with my life? But if you can lean into this question and use this existential crisis as the starting point of some really valuable and important important personal growth work, a lot of things can change in positive ways. And how to do that is what we're going to be talking about on today's show. My guest today is Bonnie Wan. Bonnie is the author and speaker, and she's also a partner and head of brand strategy at the world-renowned advertising agency, Goodby Silverstein and Partners. And she's a creator of the life brief. Through, through her work, Bonnie helps people live with greater clarity, creativity, and courage by teaching them how to write creative briefs for their life. And this work has involved from an agency talk to a workbook, workshop, speaking appearances. She's been on Gwyneth Paltrow's Goop, Jane Goodall's Activating Hope Summit. She's done a South by Southwest workshop. And now she's here today on the Love, Happiness, and Success us podcast. So thank you, Bonnie. Thank you for having me, Lisa. It's such an honor. Oh, likewise. Well, I am so excited about your work and it's like the most important thing in the world, isn't it? Like figuring out what do I want to do with my life? Kind of a big yes, deal. It is a big deal. And yeah. it sounds daunting to most people. Terrifying. Yeah. Like it's why we it avoid wrong. it. Yes, yes. <laughs> I think there's too much pressure on it. I think what do I want to do with my life feel, feels really big, feels, yeah. oh my gosh, insurmountable perhaps. Mm. But what do I want right now in my life? Or what do I want in this part of my life? Mm. Whether it be a relationship your work, whatever that means to you, um, for yourself, for something you care deeply about. Mm -hmm. uh, so I find breaking it down rather than building it up and then doing it in a way that is a practice, meaning you do it all the time. You're always asking and dropping in and tuning in to the voice or the answers that come up, capturing them. The thing I love about practices is um, it's easier the more you do it. For sure. So it sounds like, Bonnie, you have this dialed in. And I love the way you have taken such a big, daunting thing and found ways of making it more manageable and actualizable for people. And one of the things I'm actually interested in hearing about, if it's okay with you, because we, we keep it real here on the Love, Happiness, and Success podcast, is, is your own life experience that, you know, you've you've lived this, you've walked through this yourself. And I know that that's where a lot of this, this wisdom and, and insight comes from. Would you mind sharing your story? Well, you know, I'm a 30 year career mm -hmm. brand strategist mm -hmm. at Goodby Silverstein and Partners. So my job, my work, my entire mm -hmm. adult life has been spent helping companies, mm -hmm. global, big, tiny startups mm -hmm. get crystal clear about what their essence is, mm. why they exist, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, what they're made of, and then aim that essence at their most audacious ambitions. Mm. Because when we are clear about who we are, mm -hmm. then it becomes almost automatic and organic to live that in search of the things that really magnify us, energize us, make us feel alive. Yeah. And in 2010, I hit a 
not just a speed bump, but a big ditch mm. in my own personal life. Mm-hmm. I was married. Um, I had three kids under the age of five. Oh. I was the primary breadwinner. My mm-hmm. husband was launching a documentary company, but I was the one bringing home the paycheck. Yeah. I was commuting two and a half hours to and from work. Oh um, my gosh. And then on a plane a lot yeah. to clients all around the country. So mm-hmm. a lot of breast milk, you know, pumping in dirty airport bathrooms. Um, it was crazy. I'm and having anxiety just listening to this story. I like I can I can feel it. That I'm having anxiety crazy. retelling, <laughs> We're you know, traumatizing you up. teleporting me back <laughs> to that time. But it was it was hectic and yeah. Most of my time with my husband was spent arguing, negotiating, trying to control, mm-hmm. critiquing each other, mm-hmm. um, comparing who's doing more. And we weren't getting sleep. I mean, three kids under the age of five. I was traveling. My work is really intense. It's client service. So clients say, jump. You kind of ask how high, you know? So we were breaking down. And I was faced with some unbearable questions, those really big ones that paralyze you. Like, am I with the right person? Is this the partner that I can spend the rest of this lifetime with? Can I hold the big life we've created together? What if the answers are no? What do I do then? Once thought and spoken, those questions kept turning in my mind. They gripped me. Yeah. And then on a business trip, um, I had a chance to go home to my childhood home, to my parents' mm-hmm. home. And late at night, I really hit bottom. There were kind of uh, two roads ahead of me. I didn't know where one road <laughs> led. The mm-hmm. other was to the big D word, divorce, right? Yeah. Or well, this isn't going to work. I'm going to give up. I'm going to give in. But instead, a reflex kicked in, my mm-hmm. strategy reflex. Hmm. And as a strategist, I'm really good at making meaning out of messiness for my clients, right? Mm-hmm. There's big stakes, mm-hmm. a lot of fear. The world is changing. Their category is changing. How do we drop in to the essence of what matters most? And so that's what I did for myself. I tuned out the noise, the clutter, mm-hmm. the drama, the confusion, And I dropped in and asked myself, what do I want? Not, what does my husband want? Not, what do my parents want for me? Not, what do my children need? Not, what do my best friends think? What are my, um, what is my company or agency expecting? I tuned into what do I want? If I gave myself complete freedom and permission to be honest, what would that be? And out vomited, and I wrote it down. So that's a big part of this practice is capturing what comes up, allowing it to come through you onto the page so that you can look at it with a beginner's mind, with some fascination and curiosity, distanced from the emotions and the turmoil inside. And when I looked at what came out on the page, it was far less terrifying than I imagined. And it was illuminating because for so long, I thought my husband was the problem. And when I looked at what I wrote on the page, I realized the relationship I had with time was the real problem. The way I was spending my time, that was the enemy getting in the way of my marriage, my life, my own sense of satisfaction, harmony, And once that insight and aha hit me, that was my first glimmer of hope. I sent the brief to my husband. It had time at the center of it. Mm -hmm. It was midnight, late, late at night. And he immediately texted back, Y-E-S, all caps, three exclamation marks. And then we got on the phone and we really talked and connected. And that first life brief, chicken scratch, five, maybe six declarative statements, honest, free of judgment, free of editing, withholding, that got us back on an aligned track. And four months later, 
we completely changed our lives and our relationship with time. Bonnie, as you were telling me that, I was getting chills. I mean, you you rescued yourself and mm -hmm. like this symbolic power, like I'm imagining you being in your childhood home and just like connected to that that essence really of who you are and it's like your your adult self coming back in to to sort of save your your vital essence and figuring out in that moment in that really powerful place what is the essence what is at the core and in doing that like transforming this thing that felt so overwhelming into what do I want? What is the obstacle? And the obstacle wound up being a solvable problem. Incredibly. As to just like, you know, I have to blow up my life in order to, to feel better. Exactly that. And I've found easy. that every time I've written a life oh. brief, what is scary, I'm afraid of the answer on the other side. Yeah. But when I really allow myself and my truth to come out, mm -hmm. it's far less scary and it's imminently doable. Amazing. Well, and too, that you were able to like use these gifts and talents that you had been deploying in service of others, right? You'd been working for all these big corporations and helping them get what they want and being able to apply that to yourself is just remarkable. And, and now you're teaching other people how mm -hmm. to do that, which is incredible. And just out of curiosity, time was the culprit. Where where did this take you guys after you created this life brief? Yeah. Once we got clear that um, we needed yeah. to create and reimagine how we spent our time, yeah. the time we spent with our kids, the time we had for ourselves to mm -hmm. reset, replenish, you know, um, revive ourselves, that mm -hmm. was also important. Yeah. A lot of women do not give themselves that permission but we really aligned on it. And my husband needed it too, because um, eventually he became the lead parent mm -hmm. immediately after getting clear and aligned. We automatically started using our time differently. Mm -hmm. Yes, there was work. Yes, there was the madness of parenting. Mm -hmm. All the same things, the same responsibilities beckoned. But the little slivers of time where I was doom scrolling, mm -hmm. you know, news or on social media or just, um, I don't know, lots of time I found the in-between slivers of time. I started using more purposely. I started looking into new places where we can live, where we could live closer to uh, the madness, work, school, you know, grocery stores. How did we... Uh, you know, find a community of shared values where mm -hmm. we felt like our kids were really taken care of. We needed to get to a public school community because we we're spending more money on private school and preschool. And that was causing us to work harder and right. the madness, you know. And so mm -hmm. four months later, we found our brief. We discovered it in Portland, Oregon. I was living in the Bay Area at the time mm -hmm. and we were living some Bay Area cost of living and yeah. both trying to work, but we found a community in Portland, Oregon, mm -hmm. where everything was one block away from our home. The grocery store, the pizza parlor, the coffee mm -hmm. shop, the school, very importantly, the school. There was no more trying to get three young kids into a car and the fury of that. My agency gave me the gift of remote work. Mm -hmm. A decade before a pandemic and remote work was even in our vocabulary. And so my commute became up the stairs, you know, to my second floor office in the house that we rented at the center of this vibrant community that was all about taking care of each other. And everything was within a one block walk. And that completely transformed our lives. My husband was able to step back and become the lead parent. And I worked a four-day week. It became a six-year golden chapter of our lives. That is amazing. And and I'm hearing, though, that that the the original act of creating so much clarity about what you wanted through this life brief 
allowed you to compare what was in your life currently and say, this doesn't match, right? So that then you could make values-based informed choices to make the changes, this matches, this matches. Exactly. And it transformed so many things. Yeah. Writing it down allows you to really see it and commit to it in mm -hmm. writing. Writing is mm -hmm. the first act. But when you have it so clearly stated, it's very easy to tell if every decision, every situation, any choice either matches that or not. Yeah. But most of us, we're just kind of going about things as we've always done it. Mm -hmm. And often we're taking, a, we're taking along for the ride instead mm -hmm. of steering and being in the driver's seat. I mean, for a lot of people, what you're talking about is in many ways the hardest thing. I mean, so like at, at my practice growing self, like we do a lot of career counseling and much of that is what am I doing with my life? Or even like you were talking about with marriage counseling, couples therapy, it really is this getting clarity around is this relationship, you know, not just sustainable, but is it really the one that is, is congruent with my future self and what I want for my life? But the hardest thing of all for many people is getting clarity and, and I think too, relatedly feeling confident in that clarity. Maybe even they could have a picture, but then there's a self doubt of, but is that the right picture. Can you share a little bit just around how one creates that original clarity and develops confidence and trust in their own self-defined clarity? Because that's hard. Yeah. It takes practice, you know? Yeah. So going yeah. back to that original term, practice, okay. I find it, you can't get clear if mm. you don't allow yourself to get messy. Mm. So a lot of us want to skip, we, you know, we have, I work in a business culture that has a bias for action, just mm -hmm. get things done. We're in hustle culture, productivity about mm -hmm. efficiency. You know, I, I work with a lot of modern women, mm -hmm. um, who are all about their to-do lists, you know, and then we have a culture of bucket lists. So it's all geared towards mm -hmm. action. But reflection is messy. Getting to know our true selves and which voice is mine versus mm -hmm. others I've collected along the way? Like mm -hmm. my parents, my teachers, you know, um, the bully is on the playground, right. my bosses, my friends, mm -hmm. um, the people I see on social media. My it's, inner critic. <laughs> my inner critic. Well, those critics come yeah. from these other voices, right? Mm -hmm. And life is just a way of collecting all these voices, opinions, mm -hmm. advice, all well-intentioned, mm -hmm. but they get mixed up. And we can't tell what's ours anymore. Mm -hmm. And so that's the getting messy of it. And strategists, we always have to work with messes. Mm -hmm. You know, companies are confused, lots of things disrupting their categories, an intense pressure to grow and um, make the bottom line, feed their mm -hmm. investor expectations. Mm -hmm. But here's what's great about looking at the mess, using questions. And not all questions are created the same. Mm. In advertising, the thing about advertising is we have to work at speed. We have to change minds, change behaviors, get to insights in minutes, days, not weeks or years. Wow. You know, so we have to work fast. We don't have a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So what I found is we start with definitely curiosity and a beginner's mind. So every project is daunting and mm -hmm. full of doubt, just like our own lives, mm -hmm. full of doubt. Mm -hmm. Yet, if we can take on that beginner's mind, look at it with fascination and a little bit of distance, mm -hmm. allow ourselves to ask ourselves questions. Don't start with answers. We mm -hmm. always want to leap to the answer. What's mm -hmm. the answer? But instead, use questions and penetrating questions, helpful questions. Mm -hmm. Again, not the big giant ones that feel yeah. impossible to answer, but breaking it down to the ones that cut through, mm -hmm. cut to the essence. And when we can sit with those questions five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day and write, so a daily brain dump is what I invite people to do. 
no withholding, no judgment, no editing. That's the only rule. Do it for an increment of time that feels irresistible and inexcusable. You can't claim busyness. So if it's, if 10 minutes is too long, do five minutes. And once you start that practice of allowing what comes up to come out onto the page, you do it for two weeks consistently, and then you'll start seeing things that you weren't able to see because the theater of your mind was replaying them, the same stories over and over and over, gripping you, the same questions. But once you allow the words to get to the page, I have um, a teacher friend, uh, Roger Housden, who says, writing rearranges the furniture of our minds. Mm -hmm beautiful saying. Yeah. Poets mm -hmm. really know how to do this, right? Mm -hmm. Express it. But it's true. When we put it into words, we can be in relationship with it and we can see it from a distance and think, huh, wow, there's a pattern here mm -hmm. of what I'm saying. I'm using different words, but I'm saying the same thing. Yeah. Oh, here's an aha or an insight. And when strategists start to see those gems, Mm -hmm. Those become the ingredients to work with for getting clear. So all that might have sound con complicated, but it's really no. 10 minutes a day, five yeah. minutes a day of allowing yourself to ask, yeah. what do I want really? And getting in the practice of writing that with honesty, mm -hmm. naked honesty, and then looking at the ingredients you've generated and saying, which of this stuff really matters is sacred, non-negotiable. Which of it is drama of the moment, mm -hmm. situational? Oh, it's only in the here and now. And which of this is just pure noise, completely meaningless? Mm -hmm. And then you get to play with the ingredients that are sacred and non-negotiable. And from there, you can write a brief. I, I loved where you began with this because the imagery that's coming up and i think it's important for people to hear this is that the the chaos is part of the experience and that the practice that you're talking about is is helping you walk into the chaos all the noise all the things and like start calling out for your own voice in that chaos and like giving yourself opportunities like calling out with the questions and and bringing it back in through the process of writing and it's like within that chaos you, you do get reconnected with your own voice and that that becomes the origin of clarity but you have to develop that ability through practice to hear yourself and then be able to see the themes and then be like, okay, so I'm listening to myself and what of this is the most important? Is that how it kind of comes That's together? That's exactly it. So I, I think if, it, if we were to sum that up mm -hmm. in three parts, mm -hmm. it's the pause. Allow mm -hmm. yourself to pause and to drop into your quiet. I call it your knowing place where you quiet the noise, the drama, the distraction, and find stillness or create the space to hear yourself. And then the second part is to give yourself permission to allow whatever's inside you to come up and out without judgment. And then the third is to capture it in whatever form makes sense to you. I find writing to be really effective. And then once captured, we can take a look with that distance and fascination if we dare and allow those ingredients to lead us to clarity. And like you said, Lisa, the chaos is not going away. No. We're in a world where the chaos is intensifying. So you mentioned that uh, having this conversation with yourself and making it a practice is, is this very powerful way of connecting with that inner voice and developing clarity, developing confidence, that wise mind experience. And you mentioned that you found a, a few particular power questions to be really helpful to, to open the door to that part of yourself. Would you mind sharing a couple of them with our listeners? Sure. Oftentimes we have our own questions. I just mm -hmm. want, I want the listeners mm -hmm. 
everyone out there to know you can trust your own questions as well. Um, But it does help to have some really penetrating ones. So we already talked about what do you want? Mm -hmm. Because that is just drops right in. And the power of questions is our brains Mm -hmm. like to be good students. Mm -hmm. When we're asked a question, we want to come up with an answer. Yeah. You know, we want to behave. But some of the mm-hmm. questions when I ask people is, mm-hmm. what makes you feel alive? Mm. Or what gives you aliveness in this part of your life? Good one. So if it's a relationship, mm-hmm. what gives you aliveness in this relationship? If it's about work, what gives you aliveness there? What drains you? What energizes you? If you could add something to this relationship, what would it be? If you could leave something behind, what would that be? If you could shift something, how do you want to love better? Now, this is the series of questions where we really turn, right? Um, What do you want is the driving question of the life brief because it's universal. You can apply it to any relationship. But how do you want is the turn I love to give people. And it happens late in the book. Not how do you want to get there? How do you want to show up in this part of your life? How do you want to serve in this part of your life? How do you want to shift? So the how do you want questions turns it on us and our own agency and our own accountability. What do you want questions stimulate sometimes big, audacious, bold thinking, which is great. Sometimes it's a little further away and requires our patience and perseverance. Mm. But how do you want can be done immediately. Because how I want to love better in this relationship, how I want to serve in this relationship, how I want to show up differently, I can do that tomorrow. Yeah, because you have complete control over yourself right? It's a bigger project sometimes to change many of your external circumstances, but to decide how to be. Yes. And a lot of people in all my workshops and my talks say, Mm -hmm. how do I uh, life brief my partner? Can I life brief my children or my boss? And I say, well, Mm -hmm. no, not exactly. But Mm -hmm. life is a dance. Mm -hmm. When you life brief yourself, and you get clear about how you want to show up differently, Mm -hmm. every shift, as tiny as it is, will be an invitation for Mm -hmm. everyone and everything in your life to dance differently with you. So that's how we stir up change. Spoken like a true marriage and family therapist, Bonnie. It's the it's the system. No, really. I mean that that's the crux of marriage and family therapy is that when we do things differently, it impacts the system that we're existing in. Not that we do it to change others, but that people respond to what we're doing. And by deciding who you want to be is one of the fastest ways to change any system. Exactly. So Mm -hmm. therapy and strategy have a lot in common. Wow. This is wonderful. And so, you know, also in the very beginning of our talk, just bringing it back full circle. And thank you for sharing some of these amazing power questions, by the way. Um, But you were beginning to share some other just practical strategies to help people not just get their arms around this, but break it down into those manageable pieces. Before we glide to a halt here, would you mind just revisiting a couple of those now that we've had a chance to talk about how how this works? Yeah, it works in three mm-hmm. kind of ways. Getting messy, which getting we talked messy. about, right? Yeah. Which is about getting curious mm-hmm. and allowing the questions to stir up the ingredients mm-hmm. to your clarity. And getting clear is easier when you can see the patterns, see the stories that are holding you back or fueling you and pushing Mm. you forward. And then getting clear is about getting declarative, Mm. exclamation marks. I call it a fuck yes clarity. (laughs) That's how you know. Yeah. Right? It's a feeling. When you see your words reflected back to you and gives you that surge of energy and that impatience to start or mm-hmm. activate, that's when you know you have a fuck yes brief, right? Yes. With my uh, strategists at work, we talk about a simple word can be the difference between a meh brief or a fuck yes motivating one. 
that gets that creative people true. excited, bursting with ideas. Mm -hmm. And so that's the same feeling in the get clear, clear process. You want to get, push your brief to a place that you are energized as soon as you read the word. And that's what makes getting active the third part, mm -hmm. automatic, organic, easy irresistible mm -hmm. because you have gotten to clarity and inspiration, mm -hmm. taken your brief, your declaration of what you want mm -hmm. to such an energizing place that your attention can't help but go there. Every morning with every choice or decision, your brief is tattooed onto you. You can't help but want to chase it and look for opportunities and invitations to do it. And suddenly action just follows. I say mm -hmm. action is a byproduct of clarity. It's like self-leadership, like tapping into this very authentic and pure part of yourself for the clarity, for this inspiration that makes it feel effortless then to, to follow that voice once you've defined it through your life brief. It's exactly it. Wow. Why is this so important? Well, we're conditioned to think mm -hmm. that we only ever have two answers in mm -hmm. life. <laughs> yes or no, stay or leave. Yeah. This or that. I come from a creative world where mm -hmm. there is every shade of possibility. And creativity is about tapping into that possibility Mm -hmm. seeing any situation, any problem, any part of your life differently. Mm -hmm. I love being surrounded by creative misfits, people who don't take no for an answer. Yeah. They see Im the word impossible as a, you know, mm -hmm. oh, as yeah. an invitation, <laughs> you know, a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I feel very lucky to have grown up in that space mm -hmm. because the world is not binary. You have agency, mm -hmm. but it does take creating tiny daily bits of space to get in touch with your agency, mm -hmm. to reflect on what you want, mm -hmm. to get in touch with your voice. I'll skip to the end of my book, but I say life is brief. Make it meaningful. Make it yours. Live a life that is true to you. Stop chasing other people's. That is so powerful. And, and that really is the most important thing is that this, this is it. And I love what you were saying. Like, it's so easy for all of us to get trapped into these little imaginary boxes where we have to, you know, choose between two imaginary doors. And you're saying that this process blows it all open. You have so many choices, actually. And, and that by using this process, not just getting unstuck, but really designing a life worth living. Yes. And I just want to put a footnote on that. Yeah. It's not so many choices that mm -hmm. you get paralyzed, right? Yes. We often talk about that notion of can we have it all? Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is you can't have it all, but you can have all that matters. The question is, are you clear about what matters to you? Mm. And that's why clarity is so mm -hmm. important because we can live a meaningful life that matters. Mm. We just have to get clear about what matters to us versus the rest of the world. Well, thank you so much for your work and for developing this beautiful process to help people really tap into this. And if our listeners wanted to, to learn more about you and your book and your work, where would they find you? Well, the book is now available for yeah. pre-order and um, on January 16th, it drops. Um, it's everywhere you buy books, mm -hmm. but you can find me at thelifebrief.com. Mm -hmm. And that's where I have tips and you know ways to stay connected. Mm -hmm. But the book was really written to break this down to its simplest and mm -hmm. easiest practice to make it accessible to everyone so that there's really no excuse not to mm -hmm. do it. And I really hope it serves. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. It's fantastic. Thank you, Lisa. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you.